Hi guys, and today I'm welcoming Felipe, who works as a developer advocate at Pegasus. Welcome, Felipe. Hi, Julian. Thanks. So, uh, so Felipe, can you introduce yourself and how you got in, into blockchain? Uh, sure. Well, as you said, I'm a developer advocate for Pegasus. Um, I, I got into blockchain many years ago, I guess. Um, I, I learned about block, about uh, Bitcoin in 2011, and I started really reading about it more in the year after, so 2012. But um, when I really got hooked on, on blockchain and, and learning more about it um, was with Ethereum back in 2015. And, and that's when I, I really got kind of obsessed with the subject and I started learning about it daily. And, and, and that's when I decided that I want to make a, a career out of this. And, um, yeah. and yeah, so... This is interesting. You mentioned Ethereum because I think like there are many de blockchain developers like this that first they saw Bitcoin and all that. Hmm, interesting, but they, they wasn't like they were one hundred percent convinced and blockchain was awesome. And then like after they saw Ethereum, they they said, "Oh my God, this is so crazy!" Like they added the virtual machine on top of the blockchain. Oh, I gotta I gotta get into this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what was amazing about Ethereum in my eyes. It, it opened so many possibilities. Um, yeah. Bitcoin itself was already such a big thing, um, and and it was such an interesting novelty, you know, compared to what existed back then. But then Ethereum kind of just really opened the space up, and and yeah. opportunities for developers to work on top of these um, new networks. And, and um, one thing I wonder, so so you say you're a developer advocate, so I'm sure many people don't know what it is. So can you talk about this? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, so developer advocates, we, we basically help other developers understand and use a specific set of technologies. And, um, and so that's what I do. I help um, the other developers, external developers, or people who are trying to use um, Pegasus uh, products um, to understand it and to, you know, you know, develop on top of it and also eventually um, contribute to the project because we're an open source uh, shop and uh, we always welcome open source contributions. So I help other developers help us. So, so um, like for you, your day-to-day -day task, like what do you do the most? Like write documentation or go to conference or meet people? Yeah, on a daily basis, um, I, I write technical documentation. Um, I try to make those, you know, tutorials or, or step by steps. I also go to conferences and, um, you know, present and do talks about uh, specifically about Bezu or other um, related subjects to Bezu. And yeah, um, I spent a lot of time on our communication channels like Rocket Chat and you know, Gitter and all that. Yeah. So this is kind of a, a very special role. This is like a mix between um, the development, like technical stuff, but also um, re relational, uh, like so social skills. So I think that's quite interesting because as developers, usually we tend to be a very introverted. So I would say like for to, to be a developer advocate, you need to be quite rare. You need to be a, a developer, so technical, but at the same time, you also need to be, to be social. So that's interesting. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. <laughs> and uh, so Felipe, you work at Pegasus, which is a company from a consensus. So can you explain to us uh, what, what you guys do at Pegasus? Oh, well, sure. Uh, so yeah, as you said, Pegasus is part of consensus. We are the protocol engineering arm of consensus. So we work on low level stuff um, at, at protocol level networking and communications. Yeah, so you guys basically, you, you, do, uh, you make an Ethereum client, right? That's exactly right. Um, we, we work uh, and we, we collaborate on making that uh, open source um, Hyperledger based client. Oh, okay, okay. So you mentioned Bezu. So actually, before we continue with Bezu, can you clarify what's the difference between Pantheon and Bezu? Okay, so it's uh, it's basically the same thing, but uh, it was just a name change. So um, before October 2018, um, Bezu was called Pantheon, and we renamed it to. Oh, 
Okay, okay. So now Bezu is the, um, the Ethereum client of, uh, of Pegasus. So can you talk more about this? Uh, what does it do? Uh, how is it different from other Ethereum clients? Sure. So Hyperledger Bezu um, is, is, is a, an Ethereum client. It, it is completely open source. It's now under the wing of the Hyperledger Foundation. And um, we work on this and we actually uh, initially created that um, client in order to respond to a very simple demand and that's um, making Ethereum more enterprise ready. So um, making it easier for companies to work with the Ethereum network, right? to communicate with that blockchain, to you know, publish transactions on top of that, et cetera. Um, the specific advantages it has in that regard is that it is written in Java. Yeah. It, it's also a um, Apache 2.0 open source license. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, it has several specific features um, that might help companies, you know, use that, um, that client in order to build their own private blockchain and to use it to communicate with the public mainnet as well. Okay, so it has two features. One, it can be used as an Ethereum client for mainnet, so for the real Ethereum network. But the second feature, it can, it can also set up some uh, private blockchain. So typically, this is not used by, um, by most people who do dApps on, on Ethereum, but these are more used for developers who work in, in large companies like uh, supply chain, uh, finance, and, and they need to, to exchange data uh, privately, so is uh, am I right? Um, yeah, partially. I mean, th there's also we do have users that use um, Bezu as a mainnet client, and you could run it at home. I have a node at home that uses Bezu, and you know, basically acts as a normal node in the network. Um, and but yes, many of our users are enterprise developers, and they'll use Bezu to create networks, uh, maybe private networks that will communicate, uh, th that those nodes will communicate with uh, through private transactions, et cetera. Yes, that's correct. Mm. Okay. And, um, and for example, if I want to run it on a AWS, like for, for Mainnet, I also need a, a huge storage or does it do a lot of uh, optimization? Okay, so for running it on Mainnet, um, if you're not running it with uh, pruning, you would need yeah. uh, three terabytes um, of storage. But if you are using pruning, um, you'll need about 700 gigabytes. So it's pretty standard. I think um, uh, compared to yeah. other clients, it's not very far from, from those um, storage specs. Yeah, okay. And any disadvantage if I uh, don't run pruning? I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff you could read online about this, but basically full archival nodes um, have advantages because you'll have every single thing that's happened on the blockchain, um, yeah. but they're not very practical in the sense that um, most of the time you won't need that information, especially mm. when talking about older transactions that happened maybe years ago. Okay, so if you want more information, then you shouldn't do printing, okay. And, yeah. um, and the next thing I'm wondering is, what's the compatibility with the rest of Ethereum uh, tooling like a uh, Truffle or, or Solidity, like all the tools that, that uh, a smart contract developer are, are used to, because this is like very, very important. Like people invest so much in all these tools and they're not gonna use your, your tech if it's not compatible with this. So, so what can you say about that? Of course, that's a really important point. Um, we are a 100% compatible Ethereum client. I mean, this is something that uh, uses base Ethereum technology and as such, um, of course, you can use Solidity to build any smart contracts and then publish them um, through, yeah. through Bezu um, and, and you know, that the client itself will prog propagate that transaction as it would any other client. And yeah. yes, we're also compatible with Truffle um, and, and all other um, Ethereum tooling out there today. Yeah, wow, that's, a, that's very good. Um, next. I wonder if there are any project that already use Bezu now? Yeah, um, of course we have, um, we have several projects that use Bezu in production. Lots more that are building stuff on top of uh, Bezu that are gonna come out soon. But um, 
typically most most projects that use Bezu today in production are um, in the fintech finance or supply chain um, you know domains both of those are are very important uh, users for Bezu. yeah okay interesting yeah I think I think it's really good to have like a actual user that, that, that use your stuff I think that makes you guys uh, more motivated mm -hmm. um, and one thing I one thing I wonder is, so this is an Ethereum project, but this is under the Hyperledger um, umbrella. So uh, what, uh, how, how does it compare to this other Hyperledger project and other private blockchain project? So, yeah. Um, so just to explain that a little bit better, um, we, we initially created uh, Pantheon, you know, as it was called originally. And um, we decided to apply for the Hyperledger Foundation and, and contribute our code to their foundation, right? Um, mm -hmm. And to basically, once we were accepted in the Hyperledger Foundation, they became, Hyperledger Foundation became the owners of the, the code base itself. And yeah. we as a team only um, became, at least some members of our team became maintainers of that project, mm -hmm. of that open source project. Right. Um, so we update the client, we help build it, but the actual owners today of that code base itself is the Hyperledger Foundation. So it's an open source project really under the Hyperledger Foundation umbrella, which is under the Linux Foundation umbrella. Um, and so, and so that's, uh, that's how, you know, um, Bezu got to that position right there. And the difference between that and other Hyperledger projects is that, you know, that we all have different um, visions and missions. I mean, and there's there's about 17 different Hyperledger projects out there of which Bezu is only one of them. Um, one of the other well-known ones is Hyperledger Fabric, uh, which is made basically to make um, in private uh, blockchains. But uh, the main difference between us and, and Hyperledger Fabric would be that um, Bezo would be used or is compatible with the mainnet Ethereum network. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think this is very important because when companies are hiring for this, um, the, in the pool of developers, a lot of blockchain developers will have some level of familiarity with the Ethereum technology. So it will be much easier to, to create this private blockchain. Whereas for other um, other private blockchain project, you, the, the technology is totally different. So it might be a little bit harder to hire. So I think that's really like a big plus for, for, for your project. And, and, um, yeah, next I, I, so the $1 million question, how do you guys make money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so as, 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 Basically, we have an open source uh, business model. So um, we, we don't sell software because the software, in any case, it's, it's not ours right now. It's part of the public yeah. domain. Um, we, so basically, we provide a service for support um, for that software. So we, we provide a service for support um, for Bezu. And on top of that, we will also give um, um, additional features that are useful for enterprise users um, that will be able to plug into that open source client. Um, those will be like permissioning features, um, uh, encryption features, security features, monitoring, and um, other enterprise features that you would need uh, to use on top of that. Ah, interesting. And um, next, I wonder, what is your, your future roadmap? Um, future roadmap is we, we're currently on 1.3.7. Um, in February 2020, we'll be, we'll be releasing uh, 1.4, uh, which has a specific feature I like to mention is um, privacy grouping and, and, and specific group privacy groups uh, management. So you're, you're going to be able to like more um, deal with groups in privacy in private transactions more in detail and 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 more granularly okay wow so people will be able to build like really really sophisticated private blockchain with like 
fine grained permission system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's really cool. And uh, I, for, so, so let's say that I am a, an Ethereum developer. I, I know how to build a decentralized application on mainnet, but I'm also curious about, about private blockchain. So what would you suggest to, to a developer like this uh, as a first task? Like what, what, could he, what could he learn first? Sure. Um, we have a great documentation site at uh, bezu.hyperledger.org and along with that comes a great documentation yeah. team. And, and they've been working a lot on, on making it very simple and easy to navigate the docs in order to kind of use the actual software. So, um, so the, you can go over there to that, um, to that URL and, and we have a whole bunch of quick start uh, tutorials. I would recommend just kind of following those in order. Um, yeah. they're, they're easy to follow and they are, they're gonna kind of gradually um, introduce you into the, to the actual software itself and how to use it. There's, um, there's this, you know, specific tutorials for each specific subject as is uh, permissioning and privacy and then, you know, private, uh, creating a private blockchain, et cetera. And you can all navigate those on, on that URL. That's no, pretty cool. Yeah. And actually, uh, we're going to, together, we're going to release some uh, other tutorial in, in this series on uh, how to use uh, Bezu. So you guys make sure to, uh, to watch this. Um, and um, yeah, like any, anything else you, you want to say or any, any uh, things that uh, people should follow, like your, your Twitter or like maybe meet you at some conference? I don't know. Yeah, I think I should maybe call out two things. Um, we have a open rocket chat channel um, that's at uh, the hyperledger.org site. So that's chat.hyperledger.org. And you can go over there and, you know, you know, just kind of chat with us and, and ask about Bezu or anything. And, and then lastly, as I mentioned earlier, we're an open source project. We love open source contributors. And if anybody would want to contribute to the project, you know, reach out to me either on that chat or, or anywhere on Twitter. My handle is Felipe Faraji and, um, and just kind of ask me if, you know, what you could do. And I'll be glad to help you contribute yeah. to, the, to this open source project. It's, that's pretty cool. And, um, and I like to say that when it's very, very important for contributors to have a person like this who can onboard them because there are many, many projects on GitHub that they say that they want contributors, but uh, you know, you don't really know uh, where, where to start and nobody is uh, responsible for onboarding new, new people. So you guys are really lucky that Felipe can, uh, can really uh, take you by the hand and like, and show you, okay, well, you can help with this, help with that. This is like very, very valuable. So yeah, I mean, like take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, if you have any question about, about Bezu or, or Pegasus, ask in the comments uh, down below. And make sure to watch the, the other videos of this series where we're going to do actually some coding with, uh, with Bezu. So this is going to be really exciting. Uh, thanks for coming here, Felipe. And, uh, and yeah, and, uh, I, I wish you good luck with, uh, with, with Pegasus and, uh, and Bezu. Talk to you soon. Thanks uh, for inviting me, Julian, and can't wait to see the video. Yeah. Bye.